All right, everyone, uh, buckle up for this deep dive. We're taking a look at this paper. Anime Anyone 2, High Fidelity Character Image Animation with Environment Affordance. Sounds pretty intense. Oh, it is. This is some cutting edge stuff. But for all you AI engineers out there, let's start with a quick TLDR. This paper, basically, it describes a brand new technique okay. for creating these character animations. And get this, they actually blend seamlessly with the environment. Mm. So no more of that kind of like awkward green screen look. We're talking characters like walking down a busy street, you know, playing basketball or even interacting with objects. Oh, wow. And it all just looks like it makes sense. Yeah, that's always been a challenge, right? Even with those, you know, those awesome diffusion-based models like the original Animate Anyone. Right. They could make characters move really well, but something always felt a little off. Yeah, they just didn't quite fit into the scene, right? Exactly. So what's cool about Animate Anyone, too, is instead of just using motion data, it pulls in environmental information from the source video, too. Okay, so it's not just about the moves themselves. It's about understanding the whole context yeah you got it so like imagine teaching an ai to dance but you're not just showing it the steps you're also showing it the layout of the dance floor ah i see so it learns to navigate the space exactly and that means the character can do things like avoid obstacles adjust to different terrains and even interact with objects realistically okay that's a big step forward can you give me an example sure like imagine a character reaching for a cup animate anyone too uses this thing called an object guider to basically pull out all the details of that cup uh -huh. and then it blends those features right into the animation so instead of the hand just going through the cup it actually looks like they're holding it yeah exactly that's impressive it is and one of the ways they achieve that is by using something called shape agnostic masks shape agnostic masks what are those okay so think about traditional character animation they often use very specific outlines or masks right okay but those can be computationally expensive and they sometimes create these like weird artifacts <laughs> hmm. especially when you try to apply those animations to different characters or backgrounds yeah you're kind of locking the animation into one specific look right but with these shape agnostic masks it's different instead of those precise outlines they use a more flexible mask okay and that lets the ai learn how to integrate the character without being limited by a specific shape so it's more about understanding the relationship between the character and the environment exactly and that makes the whole method much more robust and adaptable. Oh, I bet. So you could take a character that was trained in one scene and put it in a totally different environment. Yeah. And the AI could still make it look believable. Exactly. Wow. That opens up a lot of possibilities. It really does. And to make things even more realistic, they also use this technique called depth-wise pose modulation. Depth-wise pose modulation. Okay, break that down for me. So basically, it makes sure that the character's movements are not only smooth, but they're also anatomically correct. You know? Yeah, like they actually make sense for a human body. Exactly. It's like the AI is learning to understand the 3D spatial relationships between different body parts. Okay, so it's not just copying movements, it's actually understanding how the body moves. Yeah, you got it. And to train this whole thing, they used a massive data set. How massive are we talking? 100,000 videos. Wow. That's serious commitment. It is. But they needed all that data to train the AI to handle all these complex environments and interactions. You could imagine. And then they compared their method to all these other state-of-the-art animation techniques. Okay, and drum roll, please. And the results were pretty amazing. I bet. But before we get into the results, I think it's worth highlighting something really important for all our viewers out there who are, you know, really into AI research. Oh, for sure. What's so groundbreaking about this work is how much it improves the realism and interactivity of character animation. Definitely. And the potential applications are huge. We're talking video games, VR experiences, films, even robotics. Right. This isn't just about making cool animations. This is about technology that could actually change whole industries. Exactly. Okay, so let's get into those results. How did Animate Anyone 2 stack up against the competition? Well, they found that well, they found that Animate Anyone 2 it just consistently outperformed other methods, especially when it came to that character environment integration. Okay. Like on the TikTok benchmark, even when they just trained it on that data set, it beat out existing methods. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Like Magic Animate and even the original Animate Anyone. So right away you're seeing some serious improvements, but what happened when they brought in their massive pre-trained data set? Oh, that's when things get really wild. Okay. After they incorporated all that pre-trained data, Animate Anyone 2, it just blew past even the top performers. Wow. Like who? Like Champ and Uni Animate. It set a whole new state of the art. That's impressive. Those are good big names in the AI animation world. But, you know, TikTok, while it's challenging, it's still a pretty controlled environment. How did Animate Anyone 2 handle more, like, you know, complex real-world scenarios? Well, they knew that existing benchmarks didn't really capture the full complexity of, you know, real-world environments. Yeah, they're always changing. Exactly. So to test its generalizability, they went ahead and created their own set of character videos. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
a hundred of them from real-world environments. A custom test set. Did they pit animate anyone too against the other methods again? Of course, and you know what? It kept winning. No way. Yeah, it consistently outperformed the competition in visual quality and motion fidelity. So that means it's not just optimized for specific scenarios. It can adapt and perform well in a wide range of them. Exactly. That adaptability, that's key for real world applications. For sure. Because, you know, in the real world, things are rarely controlled. Right. So whether you're talking about video games or VR experiences, that level of adaptability is super important. Absolutely. Speaking of realism, how did they actually measure this whole character environment affordance thing? Yeah. It's one thing to say an animation looks believable, but how do you quantify that? Well, they came up with a really clever approach. They created a baseline algorithm. Okay. That basically just composites the animated character onto the original video background. So like a before shot using traditional animation. Exactly. And then they compared that baseline to animate anyone two's output. Okay, I see. So the baseline represents what you might get with older methods. Right, where the character is kind of just like a separate layer. Yeah, and that often leads to that disconnect from the environment. Exactly, and as you can probably guess, the difference was huge. Really? Oh yeah, Anime Anyone 2 produced animations that were so much more seamlessly integrated, the characters were actually interacting with their surroundings. Okay, that makes sense. It's like the difference between a cardboard cutout and a real person moving around in the space. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. They also compared Animate Anyone 2 to another method called MIMO. Oh, right. That one focuses specifically on character environment integration. It does. And while MIMO is good in that area, it has some limitations compared to Anime Anyone 2. Okay, what kind of limitations? Well, for instance, MIMO relies on these pre-processing algorithms for background in painting. Uh -huh. And that can sometimes introduce artifacts or inaccuracies. So MIMO needs a bit of extra help to get things right, whereas Anime Anyone 2 handles it more directly. Exactly. And that difference becomes even more apparent in complex interactions. Like what? Like those involving hands and objects, MIMO sometimes struggles to capture those nuances as well as Animate Anyone 2. Especially in really detailed scenes. Yeah, for sure. So it seems like Animate Anyone 2 is setting a new standard for real element immigration. It really does. But, you know, like with any good research, it's important to acknowledge limitations. Did the authors mention any areas for improvement? They did. Well, one thing they pointed out was complex hand object interactions especially those that happen in small regions of the frame, they said the method can sometimes have trouble capturing all the nuances there. So you might see some minor visual artifacts. Right. And they also mentioned that performance can be affected when there are big shape differences between the source and target characters. Like trying to animate a really skinny character using motion data from a muscular one. Yeah, something like that. It could lead to some deformation artifacts. So it's not perfect, but it's still a big step forward. Absolutely. And now, you know, for our viewers who really want to understand the technical details. Yeah, let's get under the hood. Let's break down some of the key things that make anime Anyone 2 so effective. I'm all for that. Let's start with the core of their environment formulation strategy, those shape agnostic masks. Sounds good. Those seem to be really important for how the AI learns to integrate the character into the scene. Can you walk us through how they actually work on like a technical level? Sure. So remember, the key is moving away from those precise outlines, right? To create these masks, they divide the character mask into smaller blocks. Okay. And then they take the maximum value from each block to make a new mask. So instead of giving the AI a super specific outline, they're giving it a more generalized representation of the character's space. Exactly. And that's what keeps the AI from getting too focused on specific shapes. So it can handle more variations in characters and environments. Right. They also use random scale augmentation during training. What's that? So they randomly resize the character and objects in the training videos. Oh, interesting. And that helps the AI learn to handle a wider range of scales. Smart. It's like giving the AI a workout with different variations. Exactly. It makes it much more robust. What about object interactions? How does that object guider actually work in practice? Yeah, I'm curious about that too. Well, the object guider is basically this lightweight neural network okay. that pulls out features from the objects the character will interact with. So it's like giving the AI some prior knowledge about the objects. Right. It's not just trying to figure out how to interact with the object blindly. It has some information to work with. I see. And then how do they actually integrate those object features into the animation? They use a technique called spatial blending. Okay. And that makes the transition look natural. Yeah, exactly. It's not just pasting them on. It's about smoothly blending them in. I bet there's some fancy neural network stuff happening behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. They use a convolutional neural network to create this alpha mask. Mm -hmm. And that controls how the object features are blended with the rest of the animation. So it's a very controlled process. It is. It's a really 
elegant solution that ensures a smooth and convincing integration. That's cool. So we've talked about the environment formulation and the object interaction. Now let's get into that depth-wise pose modulation. Okay. The technique that makes sure the movements are smooth and anatomically accurate. This seems like a really important piece for making the animation truly realistic. It is. This is where they use depth information to give the AI a better understanding of the 3D spatial relationships between different parts of the body. Okay, because traditional animation often struggles to create realistic movement. Right, because it's like they're working with a 2D representation of a 3D object. And that can lead to some pretty unnatural looking movements. Yeah, exactly. But with depth-wise pose modulation, animate anyone to overcomes that limitation. So it's not just about copying the motion, it's about understanding how the body actually moves in 3D. Exactly. So first they extract both the skeleton and the depth information from the source video using motion capture. Okay. Then they clean up that depth information using the skeleton as a guide to prevent what they call shape leakage. Shape leakage, what's that? It's when the AI accidentally incorporates irrelevant information from the depth data. Oh, I see. Like the shape of the clothing or the background? Yeah, things like that. So by using the skeleton as a guide, they make sure the AI is only focusing on the depth of the character's body. Okay, that makes sense. So now they have the skeleton and the clean depth information. What happens next? They use a bunch of convolutional neural networks to process this information, right. and then they merge it all together using a cross-attention mechanism. Wow, so that sounds complicated. It is, but basically it allows the AI to learn the relationships between different body parts. And how they move in relation to each other. Right. They also use a 3D convolutional neural network to model the temporal information in the motion data. So that refines the movements even further. Exactly. It makes them even more realistic. It's incredible how they've combined all these techniques to achieve this level of realism. It really is. And they didn't stop there. To evaluate the effectiveness of each part, they did these ablation studies. Oh, that's always a good sign. Yeah, ablation studies are super important. They help you understand what's actually driving the performance. Right. So what did they find? Well, when they started removing or changing different parts of Animate Anyone 2, you know, like those shape agnostic masks and the object guider, they saw a big impact on the final animations. Like what kind of impact? Well, for example, when they took out the shape agnostic masks, they saw a noticeable drop in realism. Makes sense. Yeah, and more of those weird artifacts that you get with older methods. Like the AI got too attached to those specific shapes it was trained on. Exactly. It lost its ability to generalize. Mm. And when they removed the object guider, the AI really struggled with those complex interactions. Especially in detailed scenes. Right. The animations just didn't look as natural or integrated. So it seems like both those components are really crucial for achieving that high level of realism. Definitely. So we've covered a lot of technical stuff. We have. But for our viewers who are thinking about the bigger picture, what do you think are the implications of this technology? Ooh, that's a good question. Where do you see this going in the future? Oh man, the potential is huge. Just imagine video games where characters can actually react to the player and the environment in a totally dynamic way. No more canned animations. Gone. <laughs> it would be so immersive. That would be amazing. But this isn't just about games, right? No way. Think about VR and AR. We could have these virtual worlds populated by AI characters that feel like real people. Oh, wow. Imagine training simulations where you can interact with virtual patients or practice complex procedures. Oh, that's a great idea. It could revolutionize fields like healthcare and education. And what about film and animation? Could this change how we tell stories? Absolutely. We could have hyper-realistic digital doubles for actors. So they could do their own stunts. Yeah, or even star in movies after they're gone. Imagine creating entire worlds filled with AI characters, each with their own unique personalities. That's mind-blowing. The possibilities for storytelling are endless. They really are. It's like giving filmmakers a whole new set of tools. It's exciting, but, you know, with any powerful technology, there are potential downsides, too. Oh, for sure. What are you most concerned about? Well, one thing is job displacement. As AI gets better at creating these animations, what happens to human animators? That's a valid concern. Do you think AI will completely replace human artists? I don't think so. I think there will always be a need for human creativity and artistry. You know, AI can handle the technical stuff, right. but it's the human touch, the emotion, the storytelling that really brings characters to life. It's about finding a balance, letting AI and humans work together. Exactly. AI can take care of the boring, repetitive tasks, and that frees up human animators to focus on the creative side. So it's not about replacing human talent, it's about making it even better. Right. And another thing we have to think about, especially as this technology becomes more powerful, is the potential for misuse. Like deepfakes. Exactly. We've already seen how AI-generated content can be used to spread misinformation. It's scary. Yeah, it is. We need to be really careful about developing safeguards. It's a reminder that with 
with great power comes great responsibility. Well said. We need to have a conversation about all this researchers, policymakers, and the public. We all need to work together to make sure AI is used ethically. Absolutely. Well, this has been a fascinating deep dive into Animate Anyone too. It's incredible to see how AI is changing creative fields. It really is, and this is just the beginning. It makes you wonder what other amazing AI innovations are coming next. I can't wait to find out. And that's a wrap for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of AI character animation. Thanks for joining us. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI. We'll see you next time, 6M30.